Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor James T. Ilum Jr., Dudamus Christian Center, 6148 Jefferson Avenue. I just want to thank all of you for watching the, our program every week. And today, we are celebrating 18 years of ministry. Today, we're having at 9 o'clock our celebration. And I want to personally invite you out, all of my television uh, audience who watch me faithfully come on out this morning and celebrate with us if you can it's going to be powerful can you imagine 18 years of power we're going to celebrate dunamis christian center and i just thank you for for watching me and being a part of not only i have a congregation here at church but i have a congregation on the tv land who watch me and faithfully we're lifting each other up uh, encouraging one another every week for the for the goal of of seeing Jesus one day. And I'm telling you, it's been wonderful. But I I, I want to tell you, it's nothing like it here live. So come on out. Let us know you're here this morning, nine o'clock. We still can get here, celebrating 18 years of ministry, and we're gonna celebrate Jesus. Thank you, and I'll see you soon. And God bless you. You don't have to do that no more because Jesus once and for all forgave you and the cancellation, the penalty. You have a penalty coming to you. The wages of sin is death. Sin, like you're not getting by. Somebody had to pay for that. Somebody had to pay for that, that cussing. Somebody had to pay for that drinking that mag dog every week. Somebody had to pay for, for that whoremonging. Somebody had to pay for that lying and cheating. One thing you got away, he got away. No, Jesus put all that on his back. Somebody had to pay for it. But the penalty of death for it has been counseled because Jesus forgave you. If you know how much you've been forgiven, then you forgive somebody else. You start thinking to somebody, who is it that I haven't forgiven? Because now you understand, I'm only here because he's forgiven me that way. I'm preaching up in here. I love y'all. That's why I'm preaching like this. Amen. Amen. But we hold too much stuff because we don't know how much we've been forgiven. Second Corinthians 5, 17. Look at this. I got a couple more scriptures. Look at some scripture. Hold on in there with your hot self. <laughs> we might need to reframe that saying. Hold on in there. They said, hold on in there. Second <laughs> Corinthians, what? Right. Y'all like this dress down? Yeah. Yeah. Do you want to dress back up next week or do you like this dress down? Yeah. Okay. I can preach a little longer because you dress down? Yeah. <laughs> Some people just laugh. <laughs> They ain't really said nothing, did you? <laughs> no, no, that means that don't mean he preached longer. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna preach longer. Look what it says here. I, I, it's something that the Lord showed me that He said, "Tell people how much I love them, because they're not gonna love like me until they do. They're not gonna be filled with the flooded until they do. They're not gonna forgive people because forgiveness is a part of love. Show, show what I've done to them. Okay, well, look what it says here. In Second Corinthians five seventeen, it says here. If any man be in Christ, what? He is a new creature. All things are what? Passed away. All things become new. Now, are you new in your body or are you new in your spirit? Are you new in your mind? No, because you got the same mind before you got, you, you got the same mind. You got the same body. You know, somebody said, I got saved. My hands look new. My feet do too. No, they don't. You still got them same cones on your feet. No, you don't, if you have big cones, amen. You know, like, like, like me, you know, I ain't get saved, my ears start swinging. I still got these big ears. That, you know, it, does, it doesn't change. <laughs> I wish it would, you know, I wish it would. <laughs> amen. And so, but, but people don't understand, he's talking about your spirit. He's talking about your chain, you're a new creature, you're a new species in your spirit. In other words, on the inside, you're new. Everything now becomes new. How? But look what it says here if you keep reading. 
and all things are what? Of God who have what? Reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. Tell us who did it. And have what? Minister of reconciliation. And look what it says in the Amplified Bible. It kind of explains that. But all things are of God and through Jesus Christ reconciled us to himself, receive us into favor. How many glad that when we got saved, he received us into favor? Yeah. Look at somebody said, some good about to happen to me. And not only that, brought us into harmony with himself. Look, giving us the ministry of reconciliation. But look at the next verse. To wit, 19, that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself. Lord, hold on to your weed. Not imputing their trespasses unto them. And have committed unto us the word of reconciliation. The Amplified Bible says that God was personally present in Christ. So when you saw Jesus, God was in him. What you saw Jesus did, God did. And check this out. Not only that, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself. Check this out. Not counting up or holding against men their trespasses but counseling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of the restoration of favor. In other words, our message to tell the world is God's not mad at you. Amen. Jesus has already shed his blood and he's not holding against men their trespasses. Yes. When, are, when are we going to go tell somebody that? Who in sin? Now, hey, you're going to hell. What you say? Hey, you know what you're doing? You really don't have to do. Why? Because he's, already, he's not counting against you your trespasses. He forgave you. He died for you. He died for you and me. He died for the whole world. You just got to receive it. He's already made a plan for you to come out of that. You don't have to do that. You don't have to be that way. God's not waiting for you to change. All you got to do is say, I believe on Jesus, and He's not because he's not holding against you your trespasses. He's not mad at you. He's not even having a bad day about you. You're not even praying, but he still loves you. You're not coming to church, but he still loves you. You don't, you're not paying your tithes, but he still loves you. He died for you, and you ain't done nothing for him. That's the love of Jesus. When are we going to tell somebody that? You know what's going to happen? They're going to say, wait a minute. If I've been forgiven that much, I love that much, but maybe I can love. I, I want to fall at your feet and take my oil, take my precious and, 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 and worship you there. But people don't do that because you really don't know how much God loves you. He's not mad at you. He's not mad at you. How, how can I get this message out? God's not mad at you. God's not angry because you got a divorce. God's not mad because you got in a fight. God's not mad because you stole something. God's not mad because you in jail today. God's not mad because you ain't got it together yet. Sitting here with your religious look and your new weave and your new dress sweating in here today. God's not mad at you. Because we think if we tell them God's going to get you, then you know, tell them, tell them that. Maybe they'll change. No, that's the law. That'll cause you to do more. But we need to tell people that sin shall no longer have dominion over me anymore because I'm not under the law. I'm under grace. I, 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 because I know how much he loved me, I don't want to sin. When you know how much he loved you, you don't want to sin. The reason why you do, because you ain't never been loved before. Sister Peter don't want to sin against me because she know how much I love her. I don't want to sin with anybody because I know how much she loves me. Amen. When you don't know the love, you will be subject to sin because you haven't been affected with his love. That's why I'm sharing this. I don't care what y'all say, you in love up in here. And some people look like, mm, I ain't loving, I don't care what he said. I don't care what he said, I can't wait, what time is it? Please, I'm about to put my finger up and going out of here. 
because they, he won't dare when I went through that pain. He won't dare when they went up against me. He won't, he, Pastor don't live in my house. He know, he don't know what I've been experienced. But whatever you did, it, it wasn't worse than what they did to Jesus. And he said in Luke 23, 34, Father, forgive them for they know not what they did. You didn't do, you ain't had experienced nothing no more than Jesus went through. Because you won't forgive it because you just, you got it on your mind. You, you haven't been renewed. Y'all got the baby crying and everything in here. I'm talking up in here. I ain't through with you. I got two, can I give you two more scripts? Yes, sir. Well, how did he forgive me then? What? You mean he gave me that way? He don't hold it against me? Oh, what, what? What do you mean that I don't have to forgive first? He, he forgave me first? Look, what I got to do? Believe? Look, look, at, look at Acts 13, 38. Let me show you this. I'm, I'm rolling here. Amen. My God. Acting what? We got to start doing so much hollering. All this hollering, you know, every time I get hollering, <laughs> get sweaty, you know. <laughs> Y'all need to live right then. <laughs> got me doing all this sweat because you ain't living right. And then, and then find out you ain't even trying to change. I'm just doing all this hollering. <laughs> please, please stop it. Just release this and just live right. Living right, you know, it's just forgiving, really. Forgiving people. Loving him because he first loved you. Look what it says. Look what it says in Acts 13. Y'all got this? It says, be it known unto you, brethren. Look what it says. He, he, he was telling us about that forgiveness. That through this man, Jesus, that's what he's talking about, is preached unto you, what? The forgiveness of sins. And by him, what? All that believe are justified from all things which could not be justified by the law of Moses. Is that what I just said? In the law of Moses, they had to do it one way. But he said, wait a minute, all you got to do is believe. He said, and look what the Amplified Bible said. He said, it's clear to know and understood, brethren, that through this man's forgiveness, the removal of sins is now proclaimed to you. Removal. He want, and this in the Greek means once and for all. He removed your sin once and for all on the cross. And how do you get that? If you believe, glory to God, you believe and trust in him, you are justified. It's just as if you never sinned before. Oh, have mercy. And, and then it says, and, uh, and through him, everyone who believes, who acknowledges Jesus as his Savior. How many acknowledge Jesus as his Savior? Amen. Okay. Amen. And, said, and devotes himself to him. Okay, we all acknowledge, but how many have devoted themselves to him? Amen. I ain't getting a whole lot of amens on that. Amen. <laughs> you need to devote yourself to him. But see, we're trying to get you to do that. How are you going to do that when you know how much he loves you? Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. And look, if you do that, is absorbed cleared and freed from every charge. Uh -huh. What? I don't care what you've done. If you believe on Jesus, it has been cleared, absorbed, cleared, and freed. I got to get that because people don't read the words in the Bible. Cleared duh, mean what? Not clearing, clear duh. Already done. Free duh. Look at somebody say, I've been clear duh and free duh. <laughs> yeah, he already done it. It's a done deal. He done done it. If you believe on him though, that's when it's to your account. And I know y'all sitting here, but I know me. I know the things I've done, but I don't have to be condemned. I don't have to be guilty. I don't have to live with that anymore because everything I've done has been cleared up and freed up. I'm free, and who the sun sets free. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Free! 
indeed. Somebody shout, I'm free. I'm free. Duh. Duh. I'm freed. You can talk about me all you want. I'm freed. Somebody say, I remember what he did. Too late, I'm freed. Somebody say, I don't know how he preaching. Too late, I'm freed. How can they sing? Too late, I'm freed. How can they go to church everything they've done? Because I've been cleared, duh, and I've been freed, duh, by Jesus. Before I asked him to forgive me, he decided to forgive me. Old Testament, I had to do it first. New Testament, he did it first. We love him because he first loved us. I'm freed. That's why I'm so happy. All the stuff I did, I can say, nah, 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 devil still can't touch me. MC Hammer can't touch this. Because Jesus loved me enough to free me. And clear. It's not on your record anymore. Look at somebody say, I know you've been acting up. But since you believe on Jesus, it's not on your record anymore. You've been cleared and freed. I like that. Man. Ooh, I'm preaching up in here. Hey, man. So you got to understand that. So God's not mad at you. I'm getting out of here today. Why, could you finish? Mm-mm. I'm, I'm ready to go. I was hot yesterday. King to me. I'm still hot. And why you wear black? Why you put black on when it's hot? I'm black, I'm gonna shoot black. It had to be a number of heat. What the heat gonna do? It can't do nothing but be heat. You black, <laughs> you shoot black. <laughs> I can call me black, don't you call me black. I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Call me whatever, call whatever, whatever you call me, I ain't worried about it because I've been freed. Hallelujah. And I've been cleared. Yeah, yeah, what you yeah. said to me can't even affect me. Matter of fact, you get this, somebody's talking, they're talking about you, you said it, they are. <laughs> well, praise God, tell them I said praise the Lord. <laughs> hey, but they're talking about you. They're calling you, you know how they, uh, well, yeah, what happened to you? Don't worry, don't worry. I found out I've been loved. Woo! Anybody worry about them? I've been loved. I've been loved. Man, I get up, ooh, I'm loved. I'm loved. Man, they be like, what's wrong with you? You can't affect me no more. Because I've been cleared and I've been free. I've been loved. And if you don't love me, that's your problem. But I know somebody who loves me. I'm not worrying about what you say about me no more. Because I've been loved. I am free. I'm clear. It ain't on my record no more. I know I make mistakes. I know I'm not perfect. I know I'm not the perfect pastor. I know, but I know some better who still loves me. And if he loves me, whatever, I'll be all right. Look at somebody say, I'll be okay. Because I'm loved. Man, I'm preaching up in here. Oh, hey, woo! Man, you get this, you free. You get this, you ain't worrying about nobody talking about you no more. You get that, you ain't trying to compete with nobody no more. You get this, I don't care what you say about me. I'm free and I'm clean and I've been loved by my father. Go ahead and talk. I'm going to use it as a seed. Because the Bible says I can't get the hundredfold unless persecution comes. So that means the more you talk, the more I'm blessed. The more you talk, the more breakthroughs are showing up. The more I talk, something good is about to take place in my life. Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor James T. Ilum Jr., Dudamus Christian Center, 6148 Jefferson Avenue. I just want to thank all of you for watching the, our program every week and today 
We are celebrating 18 years of ministry. Today we're having at nine o'clock our celebration and I want to personally invite you out, all of my television uh, audience who watch me faithfully, come on out this morning and celebrate with us if you can. It's going to be powerful. Can you imagine 18 years of power? We're going to celebrate Dunamis Christian Center. And I just thank you for, for watching me and being a part of not only I have a congregation here at church, but I have a congregation on the TV land who watch me and faithfully we're lifting each other up, um, encouraging one another every week for the, for the goal of, of seeing Jesus one day. And I'll tell you, it's been wonderful, but I, I, I want to tell you, it's nothing like it here live. So come on out. Let us know you're here. This morning, 9 o'clock, we still can get here, celebrating 18 years of ministry, and we're going to celebrate Jesus. Thank you, and I'll see you soon, and God bless you. There is about to be a spiritual tsunami. with the breaking news. Uh, let's go first to CNN's Will Ripley. He's monitoring the tsunami warning. Look at some man telling me the tsunami is coming, 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 the tsunami is coming. What's the latest, Will? Well, we know that a three-foot tsunami has been detected. I'm telling you, the deliverer is on the way. You get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Let's check in with our meteorologist, Jennifer Gray. Uh, Jennifer, what are the forecasters saying? Sometimes things can show up without a forecast. <laughs> Sometimes you had no warning that it was getting ready to rain. You didn't go out with an umbrella. You didn't go out with a raincoat. You didn't know it was going to rain. And God said, that is what's getting ready to happen to you. You're not even going to know it's coming. And they're continuing as we go through the minutes and even hours. But the strongest shaking of the 6.9. A shift is a way of thinking. But it did trigger that tsunami warning. And the highest wave that we've seen has been on the coast. My paycheck, that paycheck days are over. I don't know how he's going to do it. I don't know when he's going to do it. No, I'm not qualified for this and qualified for that. But my faith is not in me. My faith is in him. But keep in mind, you could see more than one wave and they could be at various heights. Bad faith. I know we're going to fit him, but go hit about two or three people with a half five and tell them you are carrying a tsunami. Lord, As we go missed. through uh, the next several days and Lord, even weeks, of course, there's your tsunami warning right there. The advisories have actually extended you, and so for the next the couple of hours. Point. We'll continue to see a you're series of waves uh, approaching quality. the area. We may not qualify. And not that you, you live so perfect, I qualify because I know Jesus and the fullness lives on the inside of me. And if the fullness is in me, the fullness can come up and get around me and get on me. I've been through a lot this year. You've been told, if I told you real testimony, you wouldn't understand what I've been through. But now is not the time to complain because it's time to get in the river. It's time to get where God is moving. It's not time to sit there and act like it's gonna always be this way. Trouble don't last always. Many of the afflictions of the righteous. But God said, I will deliver you out of that. I'm walking around with God in me. And every trouble, every situation, every disappointment, every trial, everything that the devil, the God's getting ready to turn that thing around for good. What the devil meant for bad. Look at somebody said, what the devil meant for bad? God is turning around for my good. If you believe that, shout. Oh, but I believe I'm talking to somebody who believes in God up in here. Somebody who's tired of the drainage. Somebody who's tired of that dry 
season. They, they ready for some juice to show up, a river to show up, a tsunami to show up. Put your hand on yourself and say, in the name of Jesus, because of the shift, because of the spiritual tsunami, my paycheck to paycheck days are over. Now shout right now, because it got something has shifted. Something is about to change. You are carrying a tsunami in the spirit. Tsunami is coming, the 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 tsunami is coming. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed today's broadcast. I'm praying that the word was such a blessing to you and that you begin to apply the word to your life so it can change and rearrange things in your life for the good. If you have never received Jesus as your personal savior, um, this is the perfect time to do that. You know, we are saved by grace through faith. It's unearned, undeserved favor. Just believing on Jesus. So if you like to receive him, oh, what a wonderful day to receive the Lord. Romans 10 and 9 says, you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So just repeat after me, lift your hands and say, Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. I believe that you died for me to set me free. Forgive me, come on, repeat it, for all of my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I've done wrong right now. I change lordships. I make Jesus Lord and Savior of my life. Therefore, I am saved. God bless you. Welcome to the family of God. If you made that confession, um, please email us, write us, let us know so we can send you some free literature to help you in your Christian walk. We love you, and most of all, Jesus loves you. See you soon.